Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome aboard the SS Your Waifu is Trash. I'm your Captain Megan, and as we chart out to these dub waters, I just want to give you a few uh, rules of our boat before we uh, get out and go fishing today. Uh, the first rule of the SSS Your Waifu is Trash is that this boat may contain strong language and situations that are not suitable for all fishers. Fisher's discretion is advised. Warning that there's also a potential that you might catch a spoiler or two or the entire series for Suritama. If you are one of those people, we can drive you back to shore so that you are not spoiled on Suritama or any other anime that may be discussed. And finally, remember that all opinions expressed by the crew of the SSS Your Waifu is Trash are that of the individual crew and not the entire company as a whole. On behalf of the SSS Your Waifu is Trash, we want to thank you for coming on board this afternoon. Now cast your lines and try to see if you can fish up a good dub. I think there's one over there from the Sentai Reef. It's a Suritama. A tale to tell you, lads. A whale of a tale or two. Bad a flapping fish in the dubs I've loved. On nights like this with the moon above. A whale of a tale I tell. <laughs> ah, fuck, I messed it up. Damn it! I'm doing it again! You are doing, doing so good. Too. Shut your mouth! I can do it! Do it, do it, do it! Alrighty. Got a whale of a tail to tell you lads, a whale of a tail or two, bat the flapping fish in the doves I've loved, on nights on like this with the moon above, a whale of a tail and I tell you it's all true, I swear by my animu. Hey guys, welcome to Dub Talk, the show where a group of nerds get out, go get a tan, and go fishing for the biggest haul of them all, a dub that doesn't suck. <laughs> my name is Megan and tonight I've got the two OGs on my boat, I've got Captain Hardy, uh, 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 ahoy there, matey. First mate, Lilac. Look here, look here. I am the captain now. <laughs> and I am I'm the captain now. And I am, I am, of course, the ship's wench, Megan. <laughs> now, before, normally we would start out a lot funnier, but by the very nature of this show, which is Suritaba, by obviously the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea joke, uh, I want to say this. Norm, we know there's a spoiler warning at the beginning of the episode. Most people don't give a shit, from yeah. what I'm assuming. They just want to hear us crack jokes all the fucking time and sometimes be intelligent. We're like, we have like one collective brain cell left among all of us, and we're fighting for use of it. Yeah. Um, I usually lose that fight, to be honest. <laughs> we just distract him with pictures of goats. And all I have to do is put a picture of an anime titty in front of Andrew, and that takes care of that. <laughs> no, we all know that the hardest one to outsmart is Jet. Oh, uh, that's true. Jet's the hardest one. He's Jet's usually like, the one who takes the brain cell Jet's and runs like, with it. Jet's like the fucking Norman of all of us. He is. Um, he is. Anyway, uh, I want to seriously do this. Please do not watch this episode if you've never watched Suritama. By the very nature of Suritama itself, the more I talk about the actual show... I will ruin the actual show happening for you. You have until, I believe, April 1st to go watch it on High Dive in dub. Uh, the sub will probably still be up on Crunchyroll. I don't fucking know what Crunchyroll's doing anymore. With that being said, all right, guys, we are going to talk about the greatest bait and switch anime I think I've ever watched in my life. Ha <laughs> 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 get it? Bait and switch? <laughs> <Ba -dum -ts. laughs> White bait and switch? All right, so tonight we are here to talk about Suritama. The 2012 anime with a dub in 2013 by Sentai Filmworks. The plot summary goes as follows. In Enoshima, Yuki is a high school student who has never been good at making real friends, thanks to his abnormally poor communication skills and the fact that he literally turns into the world's greatest anime face when he's frustrated. <laughs> first reaction when I saw <laughs> Yuki's first anime face. The, it, he, this is the best character of the show, bar none. He makes the best reaction. <laughs> he looks he looks like a skinny Ichia from Fairy Tale. Hardy, why would you do that to Yuki? <laughs> he really does. Why would you do that? Man. Why would you do that to that poor boy? 
I guess I guess he, this makes him his his uh what is it Edelus version? Yeah. God damn it! <laughs> uh, Haru is a self-styled alien who decides to basically <laughs> brainwash Yuki into fishing with him. Natsuki is an irritable, <laughs> born and raised local boy, and Akira is the mysterious Indian man with a duck who watches them all for a di- from a distance. These four meet, fish, and find big adventures on the island of Enoshima. That is a shitty description, A and N. Basically, the actual plot of the show is a socially awkward boy meets up with a kid who is basically hopped up on pixie sticks do you who claims he's an alien grab my no i want to do it myself okay because i have my dvd set <laughs> i have my dvd myself. set i'm just too lazy to go get it <laughs> um uh basically the story is that yuki is a boy who really is has terribly awful social anxiety who moves to enoshima he has no friends lives with his grandma uh, and basically, they get home wrecked by this little blonde kid named Taru, who's like, "I'm an alien," and they're like, "Okay," and everyone's like, "Okay," and then you find out that like, no, actually, he's not kidding. He really is an alien. Mm-hmm. Natsuki is a grumpy gills who works at a shop and has daddy issues, and there's a duck named Tapioca. Oh yeah, and this guy who cares for a Just duck named duck Tapioca. Named tapioca. <laughs> Who's a part of, like, basically the men in black of Japan, but they're called yes. Duck. <laughs> Did we mention the nice, duck named Tapioca? Nice, and they have nice little protective suits that, that squeak, that squeak like rubber duckies. It's great. Uh, so tonight we are going to be uh, giving a review to the Dumbo Tama, mostly because this show is about to get autoplexed, which sucks. Because it's actually wah, really wah. good. The show itself is actually, it's one of those shows that, like, it's like Shiki, where the show is actually really good, but because it probably didn't sell a lot, Autoplex is gonna let it burn. Yeah. Probably. Which is a damn shame. <laughs> to which, by the way, I like on uh, ANN, they're like, genres, comedy, drama, science fiction, themes, alien, fishing, objectionable content, mild. To which, I don't know what's objectionable, objectable in this. The fact that they try, that they basically blow up a fishing shop at one point? Or is it the fact that the cat boss has giant nards once again, like <laughs> Nyoko Big? Nyoko <laughs> Big? Like, Shh. you just see this cat's nards at one point. It's really weird. I didn't even notice that. That's hilarious. How? They, like, yeah. shoved them in your face at one point. Talk I about fur balls. I paying attention. It's not even the worst pun that I've heard in regards to Suritama. There's one in the show. So, uh, we're like I said, we're gonna go ahead and get through this. Luckily, this isn't a super big cast, and there's like only like four characters who super super matter. Uh, but that being said, let's get this started with our director and writer, as this is a review. Uh, we will not be making any predictions. Even then, this dub is like six years old at this point. Yep. Yep. So, like, I, I mean, God, what the fuck was I doing in 2013? I was in college. I was finishing college, and I was about to go to grad school. I was probably drunk. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, our director is Janice Williams, and our writer is Clint Bickham. Janice Williams, you will know as the director of series such as Clannad, After Story, Diabolic Lovers, and probably the world's greatest title I've ever had to write down for a thing I've hosted. All purple, all purpose, cultural cat girl, Nuku Nuku. What the fuck is that? I don't know, but it's really funny to say. Clint Bickham, you will know, who has written a lot of things, but over at Sentai Filmworks, you will know him as the writers of Clannad and Clannad After Story, Gachaman Crowds, and The World God Only Knows. Uh, so I guess we'll take it in the order of uh, uh, Hardy Stuff Me. Okay. Okay. Unless Steph wants to go first, and Hardy, you'd like to go second for once. We always make you go first. I mean, it's up to you, there, bud. Uh, that sounds fine if you want to go first, Steph. Uh, okay. I mm-hmm. mean, Megan's in charge, Pit. so. Mm-hmm. I uh, no, Steph. As I as I heard, uh, like about five minutes ago, you are the captain now. <laughs> this is very true. Mm-hmm. I am the captain. What did you now. do with National Treasure Tom Hanks? <laughs> <laughs> he is lost at sea, never to return. No. I'm <laughs> Why would you lose Tom Hanks at sea again? <laughs> He's already been lost out there once. I'm so- Sorry, like he likes to go into the Marianas Trench and I can't fucking stop him. <laughs> God. God, I love the high Q beach OVA. <laughs> Shit. 
All right. Um... Brought to you by FedEx. <laughs> Well said. This episode, this episode sponsored by FedEx, <laughs> dropping you in the Mariana Trench since whenever the fuck the movie Castaway came out. <laughs> well said. I'm sorry. Okay. Um. God, we're already five minutes in. This is great. <laughs> um. So yeah. Uh. I'm gonna be struggling partially for the night. I didn't exactly take a lot of notes because I just had so much fun with this show. And it's because I've never seen this show before. It's the first time I've watched it because Megan's been dying to cover this one for a while. And um, going through it, this is just, I don't know what the fuck this is. <laughs> That's probably the best description of this show in a nutshell. Like, or Megan's the best, the greatest bait and switch ever. Um, in terms of directing and writing, the directing is, I'd say it's, fairly mixed to me um the four main boys i love them to death they are fantastic and there are others like um oh let's see like the people in the fishing shop uh parts of the usami family uh i love grandma grandma is so good um and there are parts where it seemed a little bit wonky to me a little bit janky and i didn't know like if it would really fit or not in terms of the show um, but overall, I really liked the performances in, like, the direction in, of, in the casting of the show, especially with the f main four, because <laughs> the main four is a mix of characters that you probably don't really hear them play much, maybe even for that period of time back, back, like, what, like, six years ago now? Um, and then the writing, the writing seems pretty straightforward to me. Like, it's very, very quirky, because this is a very quirky show, especially when you get to our aliens, like Haru and Coco, and their fun little quirks. But, um, <clears throat> there are moments where I'm like, what, what, wait, this was written and this was said? I think Coco at one point said the word redonkulous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said the word redonkulous, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, that's a thing we're going to be using right now? Like, it's it is a very quirky script, but it can kind of get a little too quirky at times, if that makes sense. Um, but in general, I would say I it's a fun one. I really did. I really do enjoy this this one a lot. And it's just so cute and adorable and so much fun. And Haru is such a fucking goober. And I love him to pieces, but Yuki is best boy because he makes the best faces. <laughs> like, done. <laughs> no, correction. Best boy is Tapioca. I'm, I correct myself on that. <laughs> I think Tapioca's actually a girl. I don't remember because at the very, if you've ever watched the show, like the very end, Tapioca <laughs> gets a uh, lover. But the lover and... is a girlfriend, isn't it? No. Oh, it, yeah, it is a girl. It's a girl. Okay. Tapioca's yeah, it is a, a boy. Okay, right. Okay. I'm done. Yeah, um, I have to agree with a lot of what Stephanie said, is that uh, it's a solid effort. It can be a little bit wonky at times. Um, and I appreciate how the script was able to get uh, some clever clever lines in there, especially Akira's pun, um, or Akira reacting to the pun about the... Na what was it, if you could say it? Something... Namaste uh, at home? It? Oh, yeah, no. What is um, the yoga instruction who uh, doesn't want to go to work want to do? Namaste home. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was funny. Um, but you could definitely tell that this came out in the period where Sentai Filmworks dubs weren't the best, that, but it's, they were I would transitioning. Early, right? It was yeah. still pretty fairly early for them. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, it's during their transitioning period to where they put out some good work that they... The, their earlier work was f for, was fairly poor, but it was this show came out in the period to where they were getting better. They were in the process of getting mm -hmm. better. They had left their Stephen Foster days far behind them. And so you can definitely tell that there is work for improvement, um, but it's a solid effort for Sentai Filmworks at the time that it came out. Nowadays, they're doing a whole lot better, but... Uh, right. For 2013 Sci Sci-Tai Filmworks dub, it, it's it's pretty good. And uh, that's all I got to say. 
Yeah, as the person who's a lot more familiar with this show, um, I will say that uh, casting-wise, Janice Williams, I think she nailed the four, the core of the show being the four main mm -hmm. leads, uh, Yuki, Haru, uh, Natsuki, and Akira, um, together really well. I will say this, though. There are a lot of really wonky name pronunciations in this show. Yeah, that's They are thing very I inconsistent. Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit of a bother when, especially these days, um, name, pronounce name pronunciation is something that we do know that Japan gives a lot of notes on them. But, again, this is like six years old, so it's like, I'm trying to be like as fair as I can to this. Um... It is a little bit bothersome. Uh, I know that in terms of the casting, though, like, I think the boys are solid. I think they're, uh, the, we'll call them the Hemingway shout couple. I think they're really good. I think some of the fam, the Natsuki's family is a little bit weird. That, there that's, are a couple that's exactly where I think it's a little bit weird at times. Yeah, Natsuki's family is a little bit weird. Um, I think that... There are a lot of times that you can very much clear that, like, clearly tell that most of the people in the background who are women are Brittany Karbowski. Yeah. It's like, they use a lot of Brittany Karbowski in the back. Um, can I just say one of the weirdest castings that I noticed was, um, David Matranga is the homeroom teacher. I didn't even notice that was him. I didn't I know that was him, too, until I saw the credits. I was yeah. like, that is not him. What the fuck? And there are a lot of performance in here here you're like wait what that that's who that is mm -hmm. and uh but the bigger thing is I think that Clint's script is it's got the spirit of the show but not the letter of the translation maybe mm. okay if you know what I'm saying I do think that the writing for Coco is where a lot of people would be really mad Mm -hmm. If I, for like the sub purists, that Coco's that's, writing she's, is she's the one who Coco. Said it's Coco, Coco. So. yeah, it's Coco who I think would drive a lot of people loco. Yeah, haha, <laughs> Coco loco. Yeah, <laughs> her name is Coco. Intended. She is loco. I say, oh no. <laughs> she dresses, oh no, like she she dresses like a bit of like what the fuck, <laughs> like put some pants on, child. Um, I think that, though I, I do think that this isn't the worst dub that would have come out of, of the time period, I do think it's a lot stronger than, if I'm correct, I believe these two dubs came out around uh, around the same time period, uh, Kids on the Slope? I think so, yeah. Yeah, this is a lot better than Kids on the Slope. Let's go with that. Okay. Like, in terms of, because, like, if you've never seen the dub of Kids on the Slope, there are a lot of technical things wrong with that. There's a lot of missed lip flaps. A lot of performances that are just very, like, outrageously bad. I still need to see the dub for, um... I, I watched the dub, and it's a great show that deserves... That, frankly, I think deserves a dub a lot better than it got. Yeah. Was that um, a Stephen Foster work? I yes. Ah, it was. that explains it. And trust me, I think Steph, uh listen to the perform like one character's performance over the phone and she was like what the fuck and it was from an yeah. actor who that we all really like mm -hmm. so i will say that this is a if you went from like just dubs around the same time period i think this is a lot more solid than another one that came out and as somebody who's a really big fan of the show in general and was a really big fan of the sub track i think it came out uh very solid mm -hmm. i think this isn't like blowing anybody's socks off like god like I'm trying to think of like a uh, like My Hero Academia, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, um, Cowboy Bebop style, but it's it's enjoyable. And when you're sitting and watching all the episodes in a day, like I just said, it was really easy to get through. Yeah, and it's, it's just it's enjoyable to listen show. to. It's a very quirky show, and I love it. It's so much fun. Yeah, and I think the dub does does get to rest. Like it's also one of those shows that like. I think the quality of the show itself really also lends itself to a lot of the performances. Um, I think for a lot of, especially when we get into the main characters, I have a lot to say about that, but, um, I think, are we good to move on to our first set of characters? Yes, please. Yep. Alright, cool. So, basically, outside of the boys, we'll be doing everybody in groups. So, the first group that we're actually gonna do is the Usami family, which is, uh, Natsuki's relatives. And there are a lot of them! Mm -hmm. Um... There is Sakura, who is his little sister. His dad, uh, Tamatsu, or 
uh, Tomo Man, I think they call him in the mm-hmm. dub. Yep. yep. Yep, Tomo Man. There is Erica, who's actually a girl in their class who works at the shrine. And there's also Heihachi, who is his uh, his uncle, basically. Because mm-hmm. they don't, I don't think they ever bring up that Erica is his cousin in the show, but they are cousins. Uh, who is the mayor in Joke and Structure? He's also the guy who gets to drop the best fun. Uh, there is also their uh, stepmom, but honestly, she doesn't really do anything besides gasp and kind of be in the background, so we're not talking about her. Ah. Um, but, so but, playing. But Allison Summerall. Sum- it's Allison Summerall. Summerall. Yeah. She's- Great job. Yes. Yeah. Good job. So playing Sakura is Nancy Novtani. Playing Tomitsu is Andrew Love. Playing Erica is Genevieve Simmons. And playing uh, Heihachi is Carl Masterson. Uh, Nancy Navaton, you'll know as Mari, Tom Tom Tomita, and Ergir, Yukia, and Elfin Lead, and Mia Gellum in Kaleidostar. Andrew Love, you'll know as characters such as Fujimaki and Angel Beats, Raito and Hamatora, and Sentaro Ka- uh, Kawabuchi in Kids on the Slope. Actually, one of the best performances in that dub, IMO. Mm-hmm. Genevieve Simmons, you'll know as characters such as Ryu Lion in Is It Wrong to Pick Up the Girls in a Dungeon, Eriyoras in at Number Six, and Neris in Shining Hearts. Carl Masterson, you'll know as the Master in Hamatora, Fuku Kishi- uh, Kishikara. Kishirakawa, it's a mouthful, in Tamako Market, in the Emperor and Uruare Moro, the False Faces, otherwise known as Underwater Ray Romano. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. Um, anyway, uh, Steph, uh, <laughs> Steph, uh, just kick us off. I'm forgetting that I'm the first one going on uh, today. Wow. Mm. <laughs> feels now you weird. know how it feels. Feels weird. Um, so... Kind of like what Megan was saying before, it the Usami family is, is the really weird section in general, I would say, in terms of performances. Because, um, well, it's hard to say because I don't remember some of them. Yeah. I really don't. Um, a lot of them just flew under the radar. I will say... Well, I unfortunately like Genevieve and Carl Masterson, like they flew under the radar. Especially Erica. She didn't really do much at all. Like I don't even know why we're talking about this character personally. Like I don't know, but I guess we are. But um I guess her er, I guess Genevieve and Carl did fine. It's just unfortunately I don't remember the characters being too involved. Um Nancy Asakura uh, Sakura is supposed to be 10 years old, if I remember correctly. Um, and she's, Nan- Nancy, I think, does portray the little bits of inner turmoil that Sakura has to go through because she's kind of in the middle of this unwarranted dispute between her dad and her brother um, over a lot of changes going on in their family. With, what well, with Mariko and um, their dad's potential decision to change the like f- shop into like some kind of cafe or something like that, and Sakura's kind of she's open minded to everything, but she's also internalizes a lot of things too, to the point where what was it? I think it was like episode seven, I th- six or seven, I think, um, when we go with um, Natsuki's birthday where yeah. it all kind of just explodes from both her and Natsuki. And when we get to Natsuki, um, there's probably go more into that with him. But um, I really do like... I really do like the progression of the performance that Nancy got to portray uh, with Sakura. Um, and she was actually kind of cute, though it could get a little... It could borderline obnoxious at times, um, but just doesn't go past that borderline, which is... Which I will... I'm okay with. Um, and then here's the weird one. Um, I get what they're going with with Andrew Love here. I really do. It was kind of jarring to me this performance, cause I think my main issue is I've seen Andrew Love play younger characters more frequently than what he did here. So, so I think that's what's affecting my opinion of this. It was very jarring to me, his performance as the dad. 
I I get the I get the personality. I get everything that's going on cuz he cuz the dad just wants to move on cuz his wife has been dead for 2 years. He's ready to move on. He's ready to like keep going with his life and do what he can for his family and it's it's some it's a it, the performance itself I can appreciate. It's just it seems with Andrew Love's very distinct voice and his distinctive range it just kind of made things a little jarring to me um but i still i still enjoyed it like after a little bit of time and adjusting to it i still enjoyed it but there were moments throughout where i still had like um hmm i was like um this still seems kind of weird like it works sometimes and then other times it's just pretty jarring i i'm being repetitive at this point i I, I didn't have notes for these guys, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, like, the Usami family is a mix of forgettable, because the characters, to me, didn't do much, pretty or pretty decent, to kind of jarring. So it's a wide range for me, in terms mm. of these performances, honestly. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go along with a lot of what Steph said. Uh, Erica just sort of flew under the radar completely um mm -hmm. she really didn't matter all that much in the grand scheme of the show mm -hmm. um so it was kind of hard to judge for what i heard of her sounded fine um carl masterson i did enjoy his performance as heihachi um especially when he makes his famous pun um <laughs> but uh but he really shines out near the end of the show when he's trying to tell the story and about the the legend of the of the dragon and everything and and um the problem is is it comes at so late in the show and there's really not much time to focus on it yep yeah um sakura was she was one of the voices i had a lot of problems with um mainly because I found Nancy's performance for her a little bit jar, not jarring, but uh, what's the correct word? She sounded a little too old, maybe. Oh, not a little, just a little too old. But she also sounded a little cringy, I suppose. I, I don't Ooh, think okay. that's I don't think that's the right word to use. But that's the best word you got that you can think of. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's it, unsettling. It's, maybe it's rough. It's it's a bit rough, and it, it, it just you know it's. It it didn't quite, quite settle with me. So, no offense to Nancy herself, but it was, <coughs> excuse me, it was probably one of, in my opinion, one of the weaker performances in the show. And for Andrew Love, I also have to agree with Stephanie, is that I appreciate the energy that he puts it forth in his performance for Tomatsu, um, but he just doesn't sound old enough to to really click with the character's uh, visual presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like it needs a little bit, someone just a little bit more older and, and gruffer and raspier uh, in order to better sell me on the, on, the, uh, on the character. But as far as the performance goes, I really enjoyed his energy and, and his, um, the, uh, the, the power that he brought to it, the sort of the, um, the exuberance that he gave the character. So I can appreciate that. And that's really all I have to say about the Usabis. Yeah, this is going to be a, a rather... I think this section is going to be rather quick. I think the other two might be a little bit longer. Um, like with Erica, I, I, I put her here because she is kind of like a little bit important to the plot. And I think Genevieve did a, no, did a job like as kind of like a background or a smaller character. I didn't think she felt like so jarringly out of place that it stood out for the little bit of scenes that she's on there. Uh, I really like Carl Masterson as uh, Heihachi. He's kind of got like that weird, groovy old hippie man kind of like yeah. feel to him yeah. without doing the stereotypical voice. Um, I think him kind of fucking with Akira is kind of some of the best moments in the show. Just Akira, Akira just kind of goes down on the ground like, ah, and he's just like, ha <laughs> Um, but I think, I think he also serves at the very beginning of the show as the narrator of the, the tale of the dragon. Okay. I think, I think that is also him. Mm -hmm. 
To which, by the way, if you ever want, like, a cooler, like, more stylized introduction to a show, Suritama's up there is one of them with the way that it it looks like little, like, dots. Mm -hmm. And stuff. It's really cool. Like, if you've never seen, if you want to watch, like, anything of Suritama without spoiling it, just watch that, like, opening scene. It's actually really, really cool and really interesting. Also, the opening Um, theme is great. Catchy as fuck. (laughs) Um, I never skipped the opening to Suritama. I never did either. (laughs) Uh, so, t- uh, Tomatsu, I, I also really agree. It took me a really long time to believe that Andrew Love was playing a, a, a guy with children, and one of them being, like, 17. Like, I could not believe that that was the voice of a guy with a 17-year-old child. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's very much, it would, it, like, it's, it's really weird, because I put, um, uh, Sentado from Kids on the Slope, and it's very similar range to me with, of, of Centauro, and Centauro's like 16, 17 in Kids on the Slope. Uh, so, I think that Andrew Love can play adult characters, but maybe not somebody who is supposedly middle-aged. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, it's not a bad performance, I just don't think it, it, it's the wrong peg, right, uh, it's, it's basically a square peg in a round hole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you can fill, you'll still fill the hole with enough pushing, and it'll it'll block your leak. But and he's got, like I said, he's got the spirit, and he's got the energy, and he's got kind of the vibe. And I think the scenes where um where the boys go missing, I think in episode six or seven, uh, where he kind of yells at Natsuki, uh, works. Yes. But and then I do agree that Nancy is by far, I think, the weakest casting in the show. She she sounds like a fifth like maybe a thirteen or a fourteen year old child, not a ten year old. Hmm. Um, I think that some of her reads can be a little bit rough. Uh, she is kind of every show's got to have a weak anchor, and honestly, like she was it for Soritama. Yeah. Um, and especially with uh how good the gentleman who plays Natsuki is. Mm-hmm. Um, cause here's the thing, uh, I'm gonna be a little bit of an early preview. I think by far out of all of the characters in this show, Natsuki's actor has the most natural sounding performance. Yes. And it is a little bit rough when you hear Sakura against him, especially when they fight, mm-hmm. uh, on, at his birthday party, which is probably one of the roughest scenes in the show. Yeah. Where she, where he smacks her. Yeah, I got yep. visibly angry at that moment. Because he he's being a dick. Right. He was being a Natsuki dick. is being a big dick at, at his birthday because he doesn't want to let go of uh, his mom. And neither does she, honestly. Mm-hmm. But they obviously don't know that because Natsuki's a dumb 17-year-old and he doesn't he's fighting with his dad and he takes it out on her. And I think that she, she does good in those moments, but with how well Natsuki's actor's doing, it does come off a little bit jarring to folks and you'd basically be like, this dub... This is why all dubs suck. <laughs> dubs only use the same 12 actors. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I think that like the family overall is just kind of like, they're, they're, they're good, a bit inconsistent, but you're not really like, but they do kind of bring up like one of the things that we say that really works with really good dubs is that, uh, even the people who are just in the back in the ensemble have to be, like, on their A-game mm-hmm. so that the dub doesn't fall apart as a production. But uh, that being said, are we good to move on to the next set of characters? Sure. All right, so the next set of characters are the characters that basically are the ones that work and kind of run the f- uh, the fishing shop uh, known as the Hemingway, which is kind of really funny <laughs> if you think about it. Um, no, these, these characters are stupidly fun. These are like the two, kind of like the two most fun people in the background of the show. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, they are Ayumi Inoue, who is a guy, the guy who owns the boat. The I think it's like the Seishimaru, who is madly, mad and hopelessly in love with Misaki, the girl who runs the shop. And at the end of the show, they get married, and he, uh, Ayumi gets kind of one of my favorite other moments of the show. It's whatever you do, boss, don't get married. It changes women. What were you saying? Nothing, Nothing honey. honey. <laughs> and he also kind of gets these like really funny moments where like she like um gives him compliments. He's like, excuse me. Oh my god. <laughs> Like, he's kind of one of these, like, dumb idiot characters in, like, uh, in the side of a show that has so much heart to it. Playing Ayumi Inoue is David Wald, and playing Misaki is Maggie Flecknoe. 
Uh, Table Walls, you'll know his characters such as uh, Tatsuji Chibaki in another, uh, Murasaki in Rei Hamatora, and the fun police Reiji Sakamaki <laughs> in Diabolic Lover. Yes! Fitting! That's who he gets married to is the voice of Yui from Diabolic <laughs> Lovers. Maggie Fleckaway, you will also know for other shows such as Thule, uh, characters as Thule and Gate, Kanako Sumiyoshi in Neon Koi, and Mahiro Suyu... <laughs> Mahiro... Suyuzaki in Review Starlight, who is still best girl. Um, <laughs> Steph, start us off. Okay. Um. Did anyone not notice that that was David Wald? <laughs> yep, it, I was like, I, it took me uh, a while. okay, I knew who it was, but I didn't believe it because of how young he sounded. I know! It was like, holy shit! It's like, Similar to Andrew Love, David Wall has a very distinct voice and a very distinct tone of voice. You don't expect him to be this character. <laughs> if anything, he could potentially like do pretty well with the dad <laughs> in this situation. And yet here we are with this guy. And I'm like, holy shit. And <laughs> David is tries to put on the cool and suave act. He's like he's referred to by Natsuki as like an older brother. Which makes sense. He's an older like sibling kind of figure to the got to the boys in the show. <laughs> but he is he's also has his moments of goofiness. Like every single time Misaki just says something really nice about him. He's like, you're a good person. All of a sudden, runs out the door and screams to the hills like, oh my god! <laughs> it was such a fun little um, little gag and little bit that David had to do, and it was the greatest thing in the world. But, um, yeah, he's very, he's very much a mentor, older brother kind of figure for these characters, and that's something that this show needs, uh, given some of the things going on um with particularly like yuki and um natsuki with natsuki's problems at home and with yuki whose only family is his grandmother so he doesn't have parents he doesn't have siblings and um that even gets brought up during um the whole natsuki's birthday thing um where yuki admits to natsuki that he's jealous that he actually has like an actual family that ha that worries about him um so seeing David Wald fit the role of the older brother figure is a really nice touch, and I enjoy it a lot. And Maggie Fleckno, um, excuse me. I like Maggie Fleckno. She has a bubbly, cheerful personality, and it's so much fun. And I just love it to pieces. She bounces off very well, especially with David, um, during those bit interactions with um, Ayumi, and um, her just being this. She has those moments where she's the, also, like, the big sister kind of character to the guys. But yet she's also, like, you're gonna want this rod for this thing, and then you want this lore. It's gonna do all these kinds of things. She's, at the end of the day, she's also a saleswoman. She's trying to sell some fishing poles and shit. And, um, I think she has the saleswoman touch, she has that saleswoman touch very, very nicely to her, um, to her character. But as, I think more as a big sister kind of character to the main four, particularly for Yuki and Natsuki, though. I think she does very well with it. And her dynamic with David Wald is just so much fun to watch. But, um, yeah, I, I really enjoy these two performances a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. In fact, I would have to say that if David Wald's performance isn't my favorite in the show, it's probably tied for my favorite. Because it took me a while to realize that was him. Once I, once I heard it, once I... I, once I actually listen to it, I'm like, yeah, I know who that is. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's sort of jarring he hearing him play someone and sound so youthful. And I guess we could probably attribute that to this being six years ago. He was a younger man back then. But uh, but yeah, it's, I really enjoyed his performance a lot. Uh, I liked the character's energy and spirit. And... Um, and I think this performance in particular was great. Uh, Maggie did a good job too. Uh, especially my favorite part is where she's going on uh, telling them about the specs of the fishing line. And the boys are just talking around her. 
and yet she keeps yep, going and going, going and going and going. And she's uh, the Energizer Bunny. Yeah, she's the Energizer mm-hmm. Bunny of fishing line. So yeah. So yeah, that was my favorite role right there. So I think yeah, I, very short to the point. I really like these performances. And that's it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, I was like bullshit. That's not David <laughs> Wald. <laughs> I think that was everybody like bullshit. That's not David at the beginning. Wald. And I'm like, look, it's been a hot minute since I've seen I've seen the dub of Kiss Him, Not Me. You and right. he does a pretty. And he does a pretty similar performance in Kiss Him, Not Me. Right. I I mean, a lot of us, like, let's just be clear. A lot of us are really, really used to David Wald's as your, your Gajiels, your Go-Go 13s, your, even though Go-Go 13 barely ever speaks. Oh, yeah. Um, shut up, you know what I mean. (laughs) Um, your, uh, Sengo Muramasa's from Token Rambu, you know, the big, like, let me take off my clothing. Yeah! Which is still about my... my favorite fucking shit in that entire show. In that that's, that's, look, that's I, they won't. She mom won't let me do a, an episode on season two of that no, show. No, I won't. There's too many. But let me bones. tell you this. Let me tell you this. If you want to laugh your goddamn ass off, listen to Stripper David Wald versus Prude Howard Wang and Tum talk to me. He's not a prude though. He's not a prude because he's doing shibari under his clothes, yeah. which is great. I was like, he's not. A he's being a. Prude. He's a kinky little bastard under his clothes. <laughs> Not Howard, but the character. Remember, actors are not their characters. Yes, remember, boys um, and girls. Actors remember, children, actors characters. are not their characters. Uh, but you know what I mean, that David Wald, we're very used to, like, the big, gruff kind of David Wald characters. So seeing him play kind of this adorable goober of a man who... He is kind of manly. He's like, by the end of the three days, you'll be a man of the sea with me. This guy gets blown up at one point, by the way. He does. And walks it off. He's a fucking badass. Cool guys don't look like at like explosions. button explosions. Like literally, if I watched the show, like even when I watched this in the Japanese, I had watched it after it was done airing. Um, and that's how one of the episodes ends, by the way. <laughs> so if you can imagine, um, and here's the thing: what really works about his performance is how his energy plays off of Maggie Flacco's energy, to which. I feel really bad for being as harsh as I did to her in Amnesia and Diabolic Lovers because she's actually fantastic. Like, I've watched her in so many other shows where she's not playing, like, wet blanket characters, and she's great! Like, Misaki is so much fun to listen to, especially where she's, like, the pride and joy of my shop, the Stella. Like, she's basically, like, um... Like an otaku for fish fishing equipment. And she's so adorable and charming, and she is one of the most solid performances in the show, I think, outside of um the the uh like Ayumi and the boys and a couple of the characters that we're gonna talk about coming up. Um I think that the other two nailed it. I like that Hardy called her the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> Because she keeps going and going and going. Uh, one of my other favorite things that she does is fake being pregnant. Oh my god, uh, yes. With a cat and a duck. With a cat with and a, cat a and duck. duck. That's a Damn, Pete and Donald Duck got busy. <laughs> oh my god. Stop So it. that's how you get the... So that's how you get Huey Dewey and Louie. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Oh wait, no, wait. Donald's sister had Huey, Dewey, and Louie. That's my bad. Right. Um, so that's what Della Duck really is. It's just a human. Um, but back on uh, back on track, I think, um, especially for the like secondary cast, I would say Ayumi and Misaki are probably two of the most solid members of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and I think that one of the other things that really helps is that Clint Bickham's writing for Ayumi, uh, Ayumi when he's uh, going off and being a goober is kind of some of the best shit in the show. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Like, oh my god, she called me awesome! <laughs> um, oh my god! Oh god! High heavens, it's the greatest thing in the world. Uh, he's got a good, he, his tackle's getting hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh... All right, so are we going to move on to the next set of characters? Yes. Yes, ma'am. You're making really good time. So this segment I would like to call Fish, Duck, and Grandma. Okay. Wait. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, Duck? I'm like, oh, I forgot we added this person in Yeah, here. so 
the next three characters are the leader of Duck, who is essentially Akira's boss, who's kind of an asshole for a lot of the show. Until, until like, the actual, like, fishy-based apocalypse happens. Um, it's the end of the world Basically, as we the world know it. as we know it. It's the end of the world, the world as, as, we, know as it. we know it. And I, and I want a fish. Fe- <laughs> and I feel fine. Um, then you have Coco. She is Loco, I say Ono. Oh no. She is Haru's sister. Sometimes a fish. Sometimes sometimes they very fr- a very pretty beta fish. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's also potentially, if you this is a spoiler alert, the goddess that originally tried to get rid of the dragon. Because remember, there are two goddesses. And goddess, by the way, is a gender-neutral term in this show. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there is Kato Sanada, who is Yuki's very kind grandma, who essentially asks uh, Haru to promise her one thing, but we never, I think, actually find out what it is. She's basically kind of the one that allows Haru to stay and helps not only Yuki become a better person, but Haru, I think, become more human. Mm-hmm. She she is a very kind uh, elderly woman, and uh, when we get to talk about our actors, I think this is the first time any of us have ever gotten to talk about her on this show. Possibly, I don't know that I think about it. And it might be one of the only times uh, we uh, ever talk about her on this show. Ooh, Coco. Uh, no, uh, Kato's. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't think I remember. So I do not remember ever talking about this person. Yep. Yeah. So playing the duck leader is Mark X Lazowski. Playing Coco is Tiffany Grant, and playing Kato is Allison Keith Ship. Mark X. Lazowski, you'll know his characters such as Anne Rand in Black Bullet, uh, Masaharu Ogata in Angelic Lair, and Iwata in Excel Saga. Tiffany Grant, you will know as Asuka Langley Soryu in Neon Genesis Evangelion, uh, Statella Harverheady in Chrono Crusade, and Sai Jino Uchi in Angelic Lair, Allison Keith Ship, you'll know as characters such as Kathy McMahon in Razafon, uh, Lily in Gravion, and of course, Misato Katsuragi uh, in Neon Genesis Evangelion. That being, I think, kind of the role that everybody knows Alice and Keith Chip for. That and uh, and what's her name in Full Metal Panic as well. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, uh, while we're not talking about him, there's another fish person alien <laughs> named uh, Urata. Who has two lines in the show, but he's played by Blake Shepard, and he's really pretty. He's a very pretty fish boy. <laughs> he's a very pretty fish, and like, like we're not talking about him, but the way that Blake Shepard like gets to play him, talking like all fancy and shit, is actually really adorable. <laughs> uh, so he's such Steph, a shy little fish boy, it's great. I love when I love when he he actually shows up. His first thing is like, Woo! and he like he like Zoidberg's back. He does. Like, he Zoidberg's Woo! back and then just bows down. He's like, I am sorry. <laughs> Really you guys weird. going fishing? Why not Zoidberg? He's like, I will go fishing too. Okay, um. All right, Steph, go ahead. So, I'm going to start with the duck leader. He, because I, I don't have many notes on him, but he's chewing that damn scenery. Like, it's going out of style. Like, this was a very, it, there was some ham to this performance. I won't Ooh. lie. Like, a mix of ham and stereotypical cartoony villain kind of feeling to it, um, which was which was a lot of fun to watch. But um, the character itself is not that memorable to me, so I didn't really pay attention outside of that. Um, as for Kato, I don't have any notes on her either. But she, I I really loved I really loved Allison's performance as Kato, cause um, she's such she's a soft and compassionate woman who is just so filled with life advice and is caring and just wants to see i just wants to see all of the good in the world come out of it and just she cares about yuki so much and his happiness and she ends up with a soft spot rather early on for haru as well that she just is is she's also like a mentor to Haru on like humanity and how things work is like you know when you like uh what, what was one of those moments when that she had with um Haru 
Um, like uh, telling him about having to say goodbye. Yes, that's the one I was thinking of. I'm like, make sure you tell him goodbye when it's the right time. Or, or, or like... The flower speech. Yes, that was so pretty. Oh, my heart just like melted every time I got to hear Allison as Kato. And I loved it to pieces. It was great. And then in one of the few times we talk about Tiffany Grant as an actress, um, I really liked her as Coco. She was quirky. She was spunky. She was out of this world, which, of course, she's a goddamn alien, so, of course, she has to be out of this fucking world. She is just redonkulous, mm-hmm. to say the least. And um, she's she also has this pestering, like, pestering attitude and personality to her, but it's very, very childlike as well, because she doesn't know much about humanity either. And um, Haru is the exact same way. And when we talk get to Haru, it's, it's probably going to come up again. But she has... she's She has a good sense of the world and how humans work. But she still acts like a complete child sometimes. Not as much as Haru. Haru is a complete and utter child and baby infant. Whatever the fuck you want to call him at this point. And having... Coco as the guiding hand for Haru is also pretty interesting, too. Uh, but I just love Tiffany's performance because she's very quirky and spunky. And she's also... She can be kind of savage at times. <laughs> like, now nah, you're going to go fishing. You are going to go fishing. You're going fishing, Yuki. Or we're going to have a problem. Do we need to go back to the sky tree, Yuki? <laughs> Do we have to go to the sky tree right now, Yuki? You're gonna catch something for me, please, and thank you. Have a good day. But um, or I will throw you off this. Or you're going off the sky tree, Yuki. <laughs> no. um, but um, I I do love her performance. It's very it's full of energy. Um, it stays true to the tone of the show itself. So I just really love Tiffany's performance as well. Mm-hmm. I'm done. My my turn. Okay. Uh, I'll start with the duck leader, and basically it's, ooh, Akira boy! God damn it! <laughs> Yamada boy! It kind of is. Yes. yes. Bring me some by your tapioca! God oh. damn it! <laughs> Why are you sympathizing with aliens? <laughs> ooh. Gigi yeah. would be using her safe... If Gigi and Andrew were in this episode, the, her safe word would be used a million fucking times. <laughs> Yeah, because of all the fish. What? No, 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 no. Oh, don't make fun no, of her. No, 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 no. Because, because <laughs> there's apparently the safe word between Gigi and Andrew is tapioca. <laughs> <laughs> because apparently it's like I, I I've actively asked him about this before. I'm like, so why is it tapioca? He's like, I don't know. There's just something about the idea of like your grandma eating tapioca that should turn everybody off. <laughs> Sounds like something. unless you're into that shit, yeah. and I don't judge. Yeah. For me, I the mean, safe word has always been Oklahoma. You're like that. You're, yeah, Jesus. It's like, <laughs> oh, Oklahoma, where the wind. The come. only Jesus can. Jesus is the only one who can kink shame you. Remember? Right, right. But anyways, no, I think the duck leader doesn't really make much of a uh, an impression until the very end. But I do enjoy the just sheer flamboyance of the performance and. Uh, He's sort of this evil, evil person for most of the show, but then mm-hmm. at the very end, you sort of uh, take him in a new light, and he ends up doing the right thing. And so, yeah, I think Mark uh, brought that sort of delicious ham and and flamboyant attitude that's just fabulous. So, um, so that was fun. About both Allison and Tiffany, I have to admit. When I first watched the show, I did not know that that was them. I could not recognize them for the life of me until I saw the credits roll up. I think we're so used with Allison Keith to hearing her as these tough girl roles like Misato or um, or who is what's the character's name in Full Metal Panic? <sighs> Uh, let me look it up. Uh, you keep going. I'll find it for you. But yeah, we're so used to hearing her as these tough ki- girl. I've been listening to Allison ever since the, um, back in the, uh, the burn up days, if you can believe that. Uh, uh Melissa Mao. Melissa Mao, right. 
And so getting hearing her kind of get to play this really just sweet, um, caring uh, grandmother role was it was kind of jarring, but it was it was welcome. So you could tell that that Kate is very, very, very sweet and genuine and nurturing and my the just the flowers line oh my god that cut to me just like you know the flowers will die eventually yeah but i want them i want them to keep as long as possible so yeah like you you think going like you watch the opening of this show and you're like oh this is a a a dumb doofy show about four guys swimming uh fishing not swimming fishing and then you realize deep down that the show has like a lot more heart to it and a lot more like depth and beauty into it than like you see on the surface Mm -hmm. also if i can be so bold i also think kato's kind of hot for grandma (laughs) You she's, know what? You're not uh, wrong. She's she's very. Why would you say something? Why would you say something so controversial? It's so bright. <laughs> I've kind of kind of got the hots for Granny. Oh my hots god! For she's a gilf. A gilf. Oh, god. oh my god! <laughs> Good night, everybody. We found the highlight real part of the episode. <laughs> we can't get any better than that. <laughs> Guess Hardy could say he's into golden oldies. Oh boy! But anyways, yeah, it was a welcome uh, change. It's not it's something I expected, but I did enjoy it. And Tiffany Grant as Coco, I enjoyed her performance of the character. One thing I didn't like was how I think it's only at the beginning they kind of make her out to be like a valley girl. I think it's only mm, in the first okay. line. Yeah, that I did have kind of an issue with. But other than that, um, I really like the the goofiness and the energy and the sort of savage, just sassiness that she gave her. So, so sassy. T- yeah, because I, I don't really think Tiff- this. Uh, you expect Tiffany to play a role similar like this. She's this is kind of outside of what she's used to. So yeah, I think all three of these these folks did a really good job. Like. Oh man, uh, I'm I, I'm like kind of laughing only because I opened Twitter for a second and I just saw that Kaiser Neko was like I just saw Mulan Rouge for the first time today. Oh my god! And I'm like I haven't watched I've only seen okay weird anecdote but like it's weird like this is actually one of the shows my ex and I both like both super enjoyed and we didn't like we enjoyed like some things together but this was like one of those things like he was like yeah this is a lot better than I expected thanks honey mm. um which is weird but. The only reason I'm thinking of him is the only time I've ever watched Moulin Rouge was at like two at two a.m. at his place, and wow. it was a really weird decision. Hmm. Do not watch Moulin Rouge at two in the morning. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, However, that still does have one of the best covers of the song Roxanne ever made. Yep. You can say whatever the fuck you want about Moulin Rouge, but that shit was awesome. Roxanne. Oh, Roxanne. <laughs> I also had a friend in. I have a, a a friend of mine who uh, we're not as close as we used to be, but her name is Roxanne. And whenever I would introduce her to people, people would do that to her, oh, God. and she would just die inside every time she did it. <laughs> yep. She just kind of look at you like, "Fucking really, guys? Like, why you do this to me again? Why are you doing this to me?" Uh, no, but I'll start with the duck leader. Uh, the duck leader kind of left an impression on me because he is just so gloriously over the top, especially a pair <laughs> against Akira's performance. <laughs> He's like chewing every bit of scenery and rubber that he can as the leader, which is it's really good because when the time comes where where he actually has to drop that facade, it's so very believable. Because uh, when they the, the actual like super leader of Duck, it's like, yeah, no, we're gonna drop a bunch of missiles on you guys. He's like, uh, no, my men are still out there, mm-hmm. and I think that Mark kind of got that switch really well. Uh, I'll move on to Coco next, which man, I am really only used to Tiffany Grant as Asuka. Which is weird because I've met her in person and she's super nice, by the mm. way. Uh, I got to help interview her for uh, something that never saw the light of day, unfortunately. Oh. Uh, um, but one of the other really big things that uh, I watched a lot more than I watched uh, with Ava than Ava as a kid was actually Angelic Lair. And if you've ever seen Angelic Lair, she is the girl with the uh, kind of nun angel looking doll. 
Right. No, 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 she's not. No, she's not her. She's either the nun angel looking doll or she's the girl. Let me look up who she is. Uh, because it's going to bother me if I get this wrong. Because I I love, by the way, if you don't know, I love Angelic Lair. It's a good show. It's probably what, okay, no, she's not her. She is uh the girl, I think, her angel is... Uh, no, she's the, the one with the kimono. Right. Shirahime. Mm-hmm. She, the angel, I was getting, uh, cause she's really good friends with, um, the one who has Blanche. I haven't she's the one, seen Angelic Lair, so I'm You gonna... should, by the way, you should see Angelic Lair. It's Lair. super it's cheap, really too. really fucking good. Yeah, it's also super cheap on sale, and it's also really good, and I've actually wanted to do an episode, a classics episode yeah. on it for a really long time. Yeah, every time Sentai puts it on sale, it's like at B-I-O-Y-D prices. Yeah, it is, it is real, it's a really good show. Also, if you've ever seen Chobits, it's the predecessor to Chobits. Mm-hmm. Good to know. It is canonically the predecessor to Chobits. Uh, it's also really interesting, because it's also a dub that uh, a lot of people, I think, uh, cut their teeth on. Slash, uh, you actually don't hear a lot of people in dubs anymore that were in that show. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Kevin Corn's in that show. Let's go with that. Uh, and there are like two people who actually know who that is, and Hardy's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Hardy knows who he is because he's seen Dean Angel. Mm. I still own Dean Angel, so. Uh, no, so I'm used to hearing Tiffany Grant as like kind of these either like, okay. I don't want to call Asuka a tsundere because Asuka has legitimate trauma that a- causes her to act out like that, and that's an insult to her character. Mm-hmm. But she's also, like, older character. So Coco, who is this younger, um, who has to speak very jarringly differently from the human characters of the show. Uh, one of the things that she does have to do is to... I think the reason why the writing for Coco, like I said, would fuck with a lot of people and make them very angry is that her writing does have to be kind of this, like, very out-of-the-box, not super faithful to the Crunchyroll subs for the translations. I've never seen the High Dive subs. I've seen the Crunchyroll subs. Um, That would piss off a lot of people. But she's written that way to make sure that you know she's an alien. Mm -hmm. And that she's a lot more isolated from learning about humanity than Haru is. Because you'll notice in Haru's writing that it gets a lot more natural hu- and human sounding as he gets closer to the human. This is true. And uh, as a character, Coco actually keeps her distance from them. She is very much like, she very much doesn't come near them. In fact, um, but she's also kind of a bit of uh, Haru's uh, moral compass a little bit too. She's very supportive of him. And uh, for as weird and wonky as her writing is, Tiffany nails that part of her performance, her speech pattern fits the lip flaps while sounding very uh, uh, abnormal compared to the human character. She does not speak normally. She does not have a naturality to her voice. But that's kind of the point of the character, and I think it really works. Uh, But that being said, she also breaks my heart at points where uh, they go after the JFX. Mm -hmm. And they have that moment between each other where she's like, "I, I don't want you to go by yourself. Yep. And Tiffany softens it up to match uh, Haru's actor, and it's really good. Also, B, uh, I like that Haru and Coco's actors have very similar pitches to their tones, despite being different genders. Yep. Or at least assuming different genders, because, again, goddess in this show is a gender-neutral term. And I like that the two of them sound very similar to each other. Uh, moving on to Kato. Kato is such a weird one, because I only know Alice and Keith Shep as... Misato. I've never watched Full Metal Panic. Ever. Mm. At all. The only Full Metal Panic I've ever watched was putting together the Dubby's video. Oh, wow. If it makes you feel better, I don't know anything about her at all. Um, so let me, I have to ask Hardy, in the scene where Tessa tells Ian to go fuck himself, is she the lady that's behind Tessa? Uh, she is... Uh, I don't know. She is the one with the short black hair that looks obviously Chinese. I don't know if she's in that scene. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 Like I said, I don't know Full Metal Panic. Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, I like the softness and the kindness in her voice. And I think Hardy really nailed it, especially about uh, the flower scene. Mm-hmm. Where she's talking about that. And then, um, to me, the scene where she's... Um, 
whether uh, her and Yuki are at the restaurant after Haru's tricked them out of Enoshima. Or Haru broke his promise to not use his, his water gun anymore. Yep. Mm-hmm. And she's like, how do you know that Haru doesn't want your help? And he's like, well, he, he did all this, th- he did this, th- he lied to me. And she's like, well, the whole scene about, like, uh, he broke my trust. And she's like, trust means different things to different people. What He didn't say uh, that, but he was calling out, help me, help me, I need your help. Mm. And I think that she really gets that s- a softness and a kindness and a warmth. And, the, like, I kind of want to say she's a bit of the soul of the show. Right. Kind of, yeah. She She's kind of the soul of the show at, that teaches Haru how to be human. And I think that they never make her uh allison play uh very like like one of the other things is too is that like you can tell she's older but she's not forced to do like the old lady voice right. yep. which is a really big benefit to the show because i don't think kate is that old mm-hmm. like she's obviously older than uh tomo man but she's not like like she's not like the grandma from summer wars right so. yeah and she's apparently sick as well so yes mm-hmm. So I think that, but they also didn't like do the like cough, cough, sickly voice. Mm-hmm. They just kind of had her play like she's a little bit more mellow and right. and stuff. Yeah. But uh, again, overall, really great performance mm-hmm. uh, here. All right. So from here on out, there's only four characters left. So we're going to do them all individually. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to kind of do them in uh, reverse order that you meet them. So, starting off is... Starting off hard. <laughs> starting off hard, we have Akira Agar Yamada and his faithful companion, Tapioca the Duck. <laughs> There's a reason why we because... have to talk about Tapioca. Tapioca because is the Tapioca is Because sure. Tapioca is like the Mononokian and the most Mononokian. They're actually the best characters, despite not actually speaking a word of English. Yes. Or Japanese, in this case. But, uh, no, Tapioca herself is a character. At one point, Tapioca starts a boat. <laughs> Tapioca she just, is like, a very, helps... very smart duck. <laughs> duck. Tapioca is essentially IRL Donald Duck because they know how to drive a boat. Um, <laughs> but, and Akira is essentially a 25-year-old Indian man who works with Duck, to which one of my other favorite lines in the show is, I may be 25, but please don't let this stop us from getting to know each other. Because he transfers <laughs> when he transfers into the school. class. <laughs> He tries to pass as a high school. Like, like, literally, no one, like, no one gives a shit though. Yeah, like, no one gives a shit that... about the alien. Why would they give a shit about he's... the twenty-five-year-old Indian? He is literally like, never right, seen in the it. class again. Yeah, yeah. He shows up once and never shows up again. Um, and he's just also just very chill, and he's kind of like, he's like the straight man, I think, in all of this. Kind of is, yeah. He's a bit. Him and Natsuki kind of share the straight man role in all of this bullshit. Um, but he's also very much, I think, the voice of reason because he's the oldest of the four lead guys. Yes. Uh, he's very much the one that is like, oh, are you the one, are you thinking of what's right? And, uh, he himself goes, kind of goes through this arc of, he is very much sent there to go capture, uh, Haru and his sister, but then he's the one that, uh, betrays Duck first to save them all. Yeah. So, playing Akira and also playing Tapioca the Duck. <laughs> Is one Mr. Josh Greeley. Ah, yay! <laughs> Love it. He's also the duck. I'm not kidding he you. He is also the fucking and, duck. By the way, the duck at the very end of the last episode, the credit goes to quote unquote attack yes, duck. Yes. <laughs> that is what's on ANN, and I'm not changing my story. No, it, um, is, it is legit. Josh. Josh Curley will know his character such as uh, Steph's favorite car in Diabolic Lovers, <laughs> Subaru Sakamaki in Diabolic Lovers, uh, Michi Yoshitada in Tada Never Falls in Love, in Akira Subaki in Mysterious Girlfriend Dex. Uh, Steph, go ahead. I didn't know Josh Greeley can do a fantastic Donald Duck impression. Because <laughs> that's what Tapioca is. I can't do it. That was not even close. <laughs> I don't want to sound like I'm like I don't want to sound like I'm coughing up a hairball <laughs> or being possessed by no, the devil. No, but like like there will be no pea soup coming out of my like, throat. I don't know how often we talk about credited animal characters, let alone credited animal characters by voiced by Josh Greeley. <laughs> it's like Monica Rial playing the squirrel and uh, Yoda. What? It's like Monica being the squirrel and Yoda. Oh my god. 
But, um, no, but starting with tapioca, holy shit. <laughs> that was like Donald Duck, what? Like, legit, that was basically what tapioca was. And every time tapioca, like, would say or do something, he became my favorite character. <laughs> Like, Tapioca is a sassy little shit, and it's amazing. And he doesn't even speak a line of English <laughs> at all. It's the greatest thing in the world. And just hearing Josh go, like, full Donald Duck was fantastic. Um, but as for Akira, though, it's, um... Akira is a very interesting character because he... He has this sense of pride and duty working for for duck but the more the sh the more the show goes on and the more we see <coughs> him especially interacting with the other guys and particularly haru i would say the more he's like kind of loosening up a bit and he's relaxing a bit more and he's getting to know these guys a bit more the funniest moments i think for josh as akita or whenever he is trying to deny himself of fishing. <laughs> like, he's just sitting there, like... Like, he, he, like, he's pretending he's not into fishing when he actually is. And then I think, what was it? What, well, who said it? It was Natsuki, wasn't it? It's like, you don't have any friends, do you? <laughs> he's just like, what? <laughs> but, um... Oh, yeah, where Natsuki's like, you don't have any friends, do you? And he's just like, excuse me? <laughs> he's like, excuse you, what? Like... I, I really, I really like Josh as Akira a lot, because, um, again, he has a sense of pride and duty, but he has a sort of, it's like an inner child, in a sense. Like, he hasn't forgotten the things he loves, which it sounds, in this case, to be, like, fishing. And he just, like, every time fishing becomes a thing, it's so much fun. Like, another funny moment is when, um... Haru, Yuki, and Natsuki take the summer job on mm -hmm. um, Captain David Wald's boat. <laughs> Akira is there like every day <laughs> going fishing. And then it's brought up every time too. It's like, why are you here? Why are you here? <laughs> what are you doing here again? He's like, what? I want to go fishing. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I'm here to catch fish. It was kind of fun. Um, Considering the balance in, like, vocal tone between the four main characters, like, I, I liked the lower tone that went with Akira and this character, and I think that's what it calls for compared to, like, Haru, who, Haru who's more of, like, a tenor, close to falsetto voice, which makes more sense for that character, um, and what, Natsuki is more, like, baritone, and then Akira, not Akira, um, Yuki is more, ten more tenor, borderline baritone, but, um, I love the dynamic with the four of them, and Josh is just so much fun. As, like, every time he calls the motto, duck, I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, with the card, I'm like, and everything, I'm like, duck, <laughs> It's like, are you okay? Are you coughing up a hairball, sir? But, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun, and I enjoyed this performance a lot. It's not my favorite, though, shockingly enough. Mm hmm well, um, when I mentioned that my performance, my if David Wald wasn't my favorite performance, it was probably tied. Uh, this is probably what it would tie with, really? because yeah, because um, I, I really appreciate Josh Greeley whenever he can do deadpan, because he mm. just sounds so exasperated and tired of everything, and it's just wonderful. <laughs> Did you watch Tata? Uh, I watched the first episode. You need so. to watch the whole thing. Watch the rest of to... it, because that is literally Josh the entire it time. Yeah. Well, here's my take on it watching this. It's almost like he used this performance as practice, unknowingly practicing, and uh, as a reference for... Did anyone else get Tokoyami and Dark Shadow vibes from, from Akira and... A little bit! And Tapioca? A little bit? This is like... This is They're, like years oh in the God. making, though. Yeah, yeah. Is Tokoyami his fursona? Oh, Is Tokoyami Akira's fursona? <laughs> right. But yeah, it's... No, I can't... I can't... I can't I can't think of it, but except uh, for Akira's Toko Yabi and Tapioca's his little dark shadow. Oh my god, <laughs> you're right. You're so right. 
I just now need fan art of them dressed up as each other. Yeah. Oh my god. But anyways, I'm the world. anyways, I yeah, I thought that uh, I thought he did a great job, and uh, and hearing him as both him and the duck was just wonderful. So <laughs> it's fucking Donald Duck. It's a yeah. Donald Duck impersonation. It's the best thing in the world. <laughs> The best part is Duck. at the last episode when Tapioca starts feeling the effects of the curse and he starts dancing to the Hiroshima yeah! song. <laughs> oh, yeah, and he's quacking along with the... <laughs> and Akira's looking like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> oh, shit. Not my duck. It's like the duck goes... One I love what... I love what... Um, it's something I think that actually did get trans uh, transferred over from the Japanese is that when he gets shot in the uh, shot in the face, yeah. he's just like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> but yeah, I want to say that the guy who the guy who uh, plays him in the Japanese is uh, has a birth is uh, birthday is today as of recording. Oh, interesting. Yeah, um, I think that uh, I want to say he's played by. Uh, I'm gonna look this up so hard. He keep going. I want to say he's look. He's played by uh, this guy too. Yeah. Well, I was just finishing up. Is that I liked. I liked him in both of the, both of these roles. I think he did a really good job. Tapioca. <laughs> okay. Okay. He's he's not. I thought he was. Because I thought uh, I thought that Akira in the Japanese is played by um, uh, Yoshimasa uh, Hosoya. No, he but that's Tokoyami. <laughs> but he is Tokoyami. He is Tokoyami. That's why. Uh, no, because the guy who plays him in Japanese is, uh, Tomokazu Sugita, who is, a uh, uh, Joseph Joestar. <laughs> he's younger Joestar. Uh-huh. Nice! <laughs> That's, he's also, um, I'm trying to think of the other thing that I think a lot of people would know him as. I'm trying to get down to, like, um, down to other stuff that a lot of people would know him. Are you in, why are you not in My Hero? What the fuck, dude? That's weird. Um, he is one of the people me's though. Yeah, mm. nice. <laughs> what the fuck were you? Okay, yeah, no, he's the guy who comes in and fills in for Hajime and um, Tata. That's why. I knew oh, got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he's that. He's he's that guy who plays Akira, but he's in a lot of other uh, s- a lot of mm-hmm. stuff. Oh, that's why, because he's a uh, Yusuke in P five in Japan. That's how I knew who mm. he was. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. he's in a lot of other he's in a lot of other stuff, but um, no. So basically, to me, Josh uh really exemplifies one of the things I very much like about the four lead members of the cast, along with Natsuki. He um he has a very natural performance, even though he is the deadpan mm. one. He sounds like a normal human being that you would talk to on the streets. Uh, like I said about Natsuki, one of the things I I think that Natsuki and Akira of the main uh, the main two sound like normal people that you'll talk to on the street. Yep. And one of the things that I also very much appreciate that they didn't do because I feel like if this was like Italia or like an older dub, he is Indian. They did not give him the Apu accent. Right. Yes. They let him just talk like a normal Thank human being. Thank God. Because a lot of people are like, oh, well, how do you know that he's Indian if he doesn't have an accent? No, he just talks like a normal fucking person. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, like, I guess you can cut this out. I have a co-worker who works in Mumbai and he sounds like every American person I work ah. with. So, like, you, you could not tell he's, like, from another country. Mm-hmm. Unless you looked at his name. Um, but Josh's tapioca too is great. <laughs> just... Oh shit! I fucking died with the fact that he's the damn dog. <laughs> um, one of the other things I would also like to point out because somebody says that Sentai never dubs their song. They sing the Anoshima dance yes, song. Yes, they do. They do. They do. They do, including as a duck. Including as the damn it's duck. The best thing in the world. And it's adorable. And I think one of the things that Steph sent me a screen a video was um. I think it's like the ep- is it the episode where they're where they're learning how to cast on the beach or before? Oh my god! Akira I know just exactly pops out of the ground. About. He just pops out of the ground and he just completely is just like very business, very yep. formal. And that's one of the things I like is also be um when he's talking to his boss is how exasperated Josh he's is. He's just so tired of this bullshit. because they clearly he clearly knows what's going on. Yep. He's like, I've seen it with my own eyes. And they're like, yeah, dude, whatever. Fuck off and do your actual job. 
And he's like, are you kidding like, me? why you don't listen to me, man? What the fuck? Why you know? <laughs> also, B, when he drugs his own co-worker with the chai tea is pretty good, too. Nope. <laughs> um... I, I think that Josh Josh's Akira is really good. It, I think this is also be um if you're like Josh Gridley only does screaming a lot of screaming characters, this would be one of the shows I'd show you to show that he doesn't do just like screamy boys. Yep. He he does uh deadpan boy right. too For pretty sure. well. Alright, so are we good to move on to the next character? Sure yes. Thing. Next up is Natsuki Usami, aka the Prince of Fishing, who is Haru and Natsuki, uh, Haru and Yuki is very deadpan classmate who uh, has a lot of dad issues because his mom passed away two years ago and his dad's already moving on and he doesn't really want to move on. Um, and eventually he gets over it and kind of becomes a better person. He's also the one that really teaches a lot about the fishing in the show. So Natsuki has also this double duty of also being the, like the Wikipedia of fishing mm -hmm. uh, in the show. So, playing Natsuki Usami is Cory Hartzog. Cory Hartzog, you would know as Kanato Sakamaki. <laughs> it's so Diabolic much Lovers. Diabolic Lovers today, and I love it. Uh, Hardy, have we ever shown you the clip in Diabolic Lovers 2 where the guy with the little bear gets the bear thrown in the fire oh by my Greg? God! I haven't seen that. Hold on. It's kind of amazing. Like, we'll have to show it to you one day. He's plays I'm that. I'm gonna find uh, it. Keep going. <laughs> Uh, he's also Sugane Tachibana in Gachaman Crowds and Shun in Children Who Chase Lost Voices. Also, Hardy, because I know you've seen the Diabolic Lover, uh, not the Diabolic, the Geratical Murder OVAs. Mm -hmm. Hi. He's Noise. Oh. The one that keeps touching him and getting all the blood yeah. cuts. He's that fucker. Ah, uh, I see. That was a hard uh, part so to Steph, watch. It's not the hardest part to watch. The hardest part to me still goes to Greg. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, so... Already go ahead. Natsuki, I really, really, I think Natsuki, like right off the bat, I'm going to say this much. Natsuki is probably my favorite performance in the show. Like right off the bat. Because kind of like what we were saying earlier, it's probably one of the most natural sounding performances. And it's from an actor that, personally, I've only heard him in like, uh, like two to three things on occasion. Like, you don't hear Corey often enough, and it's very, very depressing to me because he really is a good actor. And I think the I think the reason why I love the performance here is not only because it sounds natural, is because of Natsuki as a character himself. Because he's a, a, a in the f group of four here, he has the most complex story and character arc that he goes through dealing with. You, cause you can tell that he's still affected by the death of his, of his mom, and then all of these changes that his dad is trying to do, just because he's finally ready to move on, and he, Natsuki isn't, and it just kind of causes this tension, and his sister gets caught in the middle, and it's such a very interesting side arc and a very interesting character arc for Natsuki, and I really think that Corey was able to capture that so so well, both as a natural sounding performance and also as an emotional performance as well because he's just kept like internalizing it for the majority of the time until he finally like lets it all out and he yells at his sister on his birthday and it just kind of goes from there but he's also good he's also a fun character when he's teaching Haru and Yuki how to fish it's so much fun and entertaining he's like nah you gotta do this fam what are you doing that's not how this works do you need me to show you again? No, you don't need me to show you again. Are you sure? Are you sure you don't need me to show you how to tie this very simple knot again? No, I'm sure. Okay. Snap. Why? What? You, I could have showed you again. What? <laughs> like, there's a lot of... I think there's a lot of aspects to um, Natsuki's character. And Corey just makes it very... Just sound very natural. Very confident and yet very troubled at the same time and i just loved every moment of the performance for him mm -hmm. um yeah i'm i've heard cory hartzog in other shows he does he's an actor who doesn't really stand out to be much mm -hmm. um but in this show and and this may just be me he gave off kind of some johnny young bosch vibes at times like, maybe that was just me, like, the way that he talks and the way his lines were delivered in this particular instance. Um, 
I can definitely agree that he is the most natural sounding of them. And the part that that got to me the most was the hit the argument with his sister where he got physically abusive with her. And I just that part yeah. made me so angry. I'm like, I wow. Mean, I you're supposed to be very angry, though. So that's yeah. A, yeah, you're supposed to be really mad. That's a good reaction to have. Yeah, I I would came very close to DMing Megan and saying, "Wow, Natsuki's a dick." But um, he kind of he kind of uh pulls it back around by going to find yeah. her and apologizing yeah. to yeah. her. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but yeah, I I think it was definitely the most natural sounding, and um, and just I think I would make the argument that he of the four is the most human yes perfect. yeah mm-hmm. yeah because he does it well he's obviously not an alien nor is he an exasperated uh indian spy or a and he doesn't really have the same sort of emotional social hang-ups that uh that yuki does mm-hmm. um so he's very relatable um on a human level and uh it's nice to see him be able to play such a character with so much depth to him. So I think he did a good job. Yeah, definitely. Like I think Natsuki is uh, up there is one of my favorite performances of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and coming off of, <laughs> I would say um, of the, the four actors who play the uh, lead characters, not uh, Akira, Natsuki, Haru, Yuki. Um, if you look at the 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 seiyu side of the show, because that's one of the really big appeals of the show, this is a show that very much um, it knows its audience is is, is horny women. Yep. <laughs> um, there are a lot of really nice big name seiyus attached to the four main boys. Yep. Um, for example, Natsuki is played by uh, Koki uh, Koki Ushiyama, who uh, for anybody who uh, watches uh, doesn't watch a lot of, watches a lot of dubs or doesn't watch a lot of subs. Uh, just to give you some of uh, uh, Uchiyama-san's uh, background as an actor, he is characters like Ruth from Megas Bride. He is um, Shigaraki in My Hero. He's Yuri Plisetsky. Um He's in a lot of really big name shows. A lot of really big name characters. Um, he was a uh, Natsuno in in Shiki in the Japanese. Um, and on the reverse side of the four actors who play the lead, I would say Corey Hartzog is probably the least well-known to people even who exclusively watch dubs. Mm-hmm. Um, trust me, I dealt with someone last night who didn't know who Kaylee Mills was, despite her being one of the, the best up-and-coming actors in, in dub She's anime. still pretty new, yeah. And he, But even then, she's been on a lot of really high-profile shows mm-hmm. as leads. Right. Like, Fate Apocrypha, ReZero. But, like... Um, so to me that Corey's performance is so natural sounding like i said with josh's akira like you could just talk to this person in real life and it's a real person voice like it's not like and, and you're probably saying like oh that's that's really insulting to a lot of other dub actors no like there are a lot of times where like like japan has given them notes we are going for this in the performance it's like as much as I love uh, President Mike, uh, Dave Choska's take on President Mike and My Hero, it is very, very clearly like a sports announcer like style of speaking. Mm-hmm. Because that's what the character calls right. for. Um, but Natsuki is, is like Steph said, probably the most emotionally complex, has one of the most emotionally complex arc of all the characters in the show. I'd say notwithstanding Haru. So I think Haru's emotional arc is incredibly complex as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and for me, I am a lot more familiar with Corey. I've watched both seasons of Diabolic Lover's Dramatical Murder. Speaking of, and I, I will did say that he's the thing. Oh, good. With the show. Is it in it English? Is... <laughs> oh, After this, we're showing you this, Hardy, because it's the fucking funniest <laughs> shit in the world. Right. Um, but for me, I've, I've genuinely liked Corey in a lot of things, but I still say, I would think this is probably my favorite performances of, uh, of his. Oh, wow. Um, I don't know what I don't I haven't heard him in a lot of stuff recently. Yeah, I haven't heard. So I don't him know if he if he recently. went back to theater or what happened. But for the short time that he was around Sentai, I I genuinely liked his work, and I think this is probably his best work. I think this is probably uh, the best I, I've seen him too, honestly. I haven't seen Gotchaman Crowds in English, so I can't speak because I know he's I think the male lead in. He's Gotchaman also the Crowds. lead for um, Akamega Kill, but I haven't really seen it either. So 
I haven't watched the dub of a comic get killed, but and I don't plan to watch a comic get killed. I know it's not a show all. I I, I own um, it, so I should watch it at some point. Because <laughs> just say I did. A comic get killed is not a show Megan would like. Mm. Um, but uh, Corey Corey just does this really great stuff with Natsuki, and I think when he also yells as Natsuki, it's not the yelling that's loud, but it's the yelling that's impactful because you can tell that it's somebody who's so viscerally angry. That they're not screaming loudly, but they're definitely, like, penetrating you, in a sense. Mm. Like, you know, it's it's not the I'm loud angry, it's the I'm so pissed and disappointed in you angry. Yeah. Which is honestly the more hurtful angry, if you think it about is, it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the other thing, like, I, wanted, I also, like I said, uh, Natsuki's also kind of like the fishing encyclopedia he, of he the is. show. He is. He's our surrogate fishing instructor he's the the surrogate instructor the fact that he never comes off as super preachy when he's explaining yes. stuff is a really hard line to walk so good job to Corey there but i i really agree with you guys so are we ready to move on to the next character yep, yep. this is the fun part <laughs> <laughs> this is where the fun part uh time to get your bbs on it is the other goddess haru who is a strange transfer student boy who brainwashes people with a water gun because the aliens in this show communicate through water. However, when they use it on people, it brainwashes them. Because fuck you, that's why. Yeah, because logic. Um, because logic. There is none in this yeah. show. Um, they. But Haru is the 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 self proclaimed alien who is in fact an actual alien. Like, I want to say this: the show, the fact that the show just goes with it. Mm-hmm. And it, and it hides it really well until about episode six. Because that's when the plot kicks yep. in. <laughs> and they do it really well. Uh, that Haru is this very cheerful, upbeat, zany kind of character. But deep down, he does not know how to be human. And he becomes more human as the show goes mm-hmm. on. And you really do feel for him. And I, like, I legitimately started tearing up because of him in the show. Haru's a, a great, weird little character. And playing this great, weird little character is Clint Bickham, the writer of our show. Clint Bickham, you'll also know as characters such as Akihito Kambara in Beyond the Boundary, Shun Aonuma from From the New World, and Kenma Kozume from Haikyuu. Steph, start us off. Um, how do you talk about a character like Haru? <laughs> oh my god. Haru is adorable as shit. <laughs> like, like I was kind of like what I was saying earlier with um Coco is Coco kind of has a little bit of childlike qualities to her. Haru is a complete and total child. He's an anthropomorphic pixie stick. <laughs> ah! Who's also a fish. He's like he's the incarnation of sugar. <laughs> of, sh- of, sh- of sugar possibly cocaine because he's hyped <laughs> up like fucking nuts it's- he's like Miano from Tana Cocoon they are the living embodiments of being on Pablo Escobar's level of <laughs> it's true which means that he's also probably from the planet that Noah came oh, from oh yeah oh my god but um <laughs> My heart. I'm not apologizing for that. <laughs> but Clint is very, very adorable as Haru, and it's so much fun. He's adorable, he's spazzy, he's just so precious. But the key part, and we've been talking about this quite a bit too, is at first he is really energetic and like curious and just is like, I wanna go fishing! Can we go fishing? We're gonna go fishing right now! You're not gonna go fishing, squirt! Um But well, like we've been saying throughout the whole episode is the more Haru interacts with people and with humanity, the more human-like he becomes. Like, he starts understanding emotions more, understanding humans more, especially with his interactions and his friendship with Yuki. Because, um, let's face it, those two are, like, the bestest of friends, even though Yuki will tell you otherwise. But, um, he learns a lot by just interacting with people and to see clint grow from this very very spazzy child to a more human-like presence in the show that just wants to just cares for everyone and just wants to do what he can to help everyone because one of the big elements of the show when the plot really hits the fan is um 
he drives everybody out of Enoshima. Enoshima. Mm-hmm. Like, like I'm a scary alien. I'm here. Get out. Get out. And like, he'll squirt people and tell and like control them to get them to f- get the fuck out of there. Um, but it's only because he wants to save everyone. He, he's not doing it to be spiteful. He's not doing it to terrify people. He just wants to save everyone. He doesn't want to see Enoshima destroyed. He doesn't want to see all of these people being controlled. So it's a very interesting progression in the character. And I think Clint just performs it so so well and he's just so adorable and he's so cute <laughs> and i just want to give him a hug because he's such a precious little cinnamon roll too good and pure for this world but uh yeah that's that's pretty much it i would have to say on that one i'm gonna make both you girls so angry right now because no! you hate it i no! thought he was annoying and no! he 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 gets better as the show goes on, no. but just something about so him just cute. I don't I can't really put my finger on it. And I think it's because the character's kind the of obnoxious. Character, itself. The character's obnoxious, and and I wasn't really quite sold on on Clint's performance either. It's it just it sounded so off with it. I'll give you a hint: the Japanese sounds very similar. Yeah, I, I I bet it does. It's just. It took me a while to warm up to his character because I did find him exceptionally annoying at the beginning, and he does get better as the show goes on, but I don't know. I just wasn't feeling it, to be perfectly honest. It's, I've heard Clint Bickham in other roles where he's done really good, and, and I don't know. I just, this one, I just, I, I'm not a, the biggest fan. I mean- I'm sorry. I'll say it's not my favorite Clint Bickham performance. No, I mean, Akihiro <coughs> kind of takes that- takes that honor and runs nothing's with it. touched nothing is touched Doc here no, to come for a while for me but um i mean i still love it it's it's so much fun and precious it's great that's yeah. how i feel anyway I, just, I don't know it just it didn't really work for me so i mean i have issues with haru as a character anyways but i mean that it is what it is sorry to be sorry to be the voice of dissonance Damn it how dare you get out of my house <laughs> how dare you how dare you <laughs> Get out of my house! <laughs> Get off my boat! You're fired! <laughs> I didn't like this boat anyway. <laughs> Just kicking you off the Titanic. You're the guy who falls. It's like, you know that part of the Titanic where the guy falls and hits the propeller? Oh. Just long live the king. I wouldn't actually do that. You're too nice to die. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. You're a good dude. Thank you. Thank you. Without you, where else would I get my goat picks? <laughs> Like a de- like a dealer. <laughs> I need to put out more goat pics. Like, I haven't done it in a while. Just, what just is like, wrong with you? You're walking down like it's a rainy day in Animu Land. All the waifus have been put away because of the rain. <laughs> you're downtrodden because you're never gonna get your second season of your favorite show. And you you hear it from the corner. Hey, hey, kid. And you look over and there's just a man standing there in a trench coat <laughs> with a hat on, <laughs> with a with a hat on and a. Dusty copy of Master Keaton sticking out of one of the pockets. <laughs> I actually, it's funny that you said a trench coat because have and you seen my big black trench coat? Oh my god! No. I, I have actually not. have one. It's yes. anyway. You wander a little closer, and he's like, "Kid, I know you're down. My white whales ain't coming either, but I can offer you some comfort." And you just open your coat, and there are just pictures of goats, <laughs> baby goats, goats standing on top of like plastic hippos. There's the one picture of a donkey wearing pants. <laughs> I do have that picture. And then the kid looks at you and goes, Thank you, sir. I needed this. And he takes a picture and he goes on his way and he jacks a she on <laughs> from that time God I got reincarnated it. as It was fly. Andrew all along. Long. <laughs> Oh my god. Ah, that was a great dunking. <laughs> What's it think- And he's not even here to defend what himself. Android Android 16 couldn't dunk that hard. Oh. <laughs> oh, what's uh, great? What's but he's great got it. Is-, is is he the one is he the one with the boat or is he the one that Jeremy, Jeremy had played? Yeah. Oh, he's yeah, dead. He's dead. Oh, with his birds. Uh, no, oh, it'll, be, it'll so, make you very happy to know I'm actually just spamming Andrew with gifts for no fucking reason right now. It's <laughs> because I can. I actually just found that's some what good fun Suri Tama ones and I'm gonna... 
He hasn't seen the show, so don't send him. I'm like, not going to. Ones. I found the one of um, Akira just popping out of the sand. That's what I'm going to send him right. Good. Right that's like the best one. I <laughs> uh, no. So I actually really, really enjoy Clint Bickham as Haru. I know that the character himself can be a uh, very hit or miss for people. Um, but I- I- I'll be I'll be clear. His performance is very similar to his Seiyu, uh Miyu Irino. For a lot of people who don't know, is characters such as who goes back as far as Dean Angel. Oh, wow. oh shit! Okay. Uh, as a Seiyu, yeah, he's he's Daisuke and Dean Angel, uh, Senkawa and Brody the Mighty. Um, though a lot of uh, a lot of us more recently would uh, very much know him as the voice of uh, everyone's really favorite dumb uh, dumb half demon Seraph Yuichiro. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yes, he he's Yuichiro, and I think he's actually he's also a uh, Ritsu in Mob Psycho. Oh, nice. The uh the other one that I I was that's right. A lot of times he's matched up to Micah characters. Okay. Because because he's also a uh, Akito and Akito the Exiled. So. Oh. But Clint's performance is very very similar for that, and I I think that the character itself kind of calls for me having a voice that's a little bit obnoxious at the beginning because he's kind of an obnoxious character. Yeah. And he's overly childish. And remember, he has to sound like I said about Coco. Um, they sound very similar mm-hmm. in tone and like tonal range. Mm-hmm. And he has to kind of be this like weird, obnoxious character. But I think the strength of Clint's performance as Haru is not in the the bee, 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 I'm an alien stuff. It's it's those moments where he's quieter, where he's kind of going through uh, his heart hurting. For the first time in his life. And he's got to have. He has these very human emotions. About pain and love. And care for, for people. And um, when he's kind of at those moments. Where you think he's going to die. Because he's out of water. Really get me. Where he's like watering the flowers with the gun. Yeah. And he's like I have to I have to keep you alive. So I, I thought that he nailed it there. And. I would say that he he is a lot stronger than the Usumi family, but if I had to pick the weakest link of the four main guys or the performance that's just like, I don't want to call it weak because it's I don't think it's a weak performance. I think that he is not as strong. My favorite of the four boys, maybe not as strong, but I still think it's a good, a, a really good performance. And it's it's again time for me to get up on my soapbox of just let Clint Bickham be in shit, please. please just do it. He's great because he does a lot more. He does a lot more writing than acting sometimes. He's a great actor. That makes me sad. The great thing, we do get to talk about him again soon, Steph. So Wait, we do? Yes, because he's one of the boys in Surene. Oh, fuck. Okay. I haven't even touched Surene yet. I haven't. I've touched, like, one episode of that in English, so. <laughs> but I, I can kind of see where, like, both of you guys are coming from. Mm-hmm. So... But I, I, I genuinely am more on the side of I really I really like this show. Mm-hmm. I really like the the character. I like the performance. I think it's doing exactly what it mm-hmm. needs to be. Mm-hmm. Um is it a little bit jarring and will it mess with some people? Absolutely. Uh but one of the other things I do wanna really compliment is uh towards the ending of the show where he's got to be uh thrown into the sea. <laughs> yep. And I, I remember Steph just sending me a text. Why are they putting a, a rope Why around his neck? Why his neck? He's gonna get choked out. Yeah. What the fuck? Get out. <laughs> to which, by the way, I thought that was a really like of all the really cool twists in the show. To me, the coolest twist of all was that Haru was the lure the entire yeah, time. That was actually a pretty good one. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> and that they and that like because you're not paying attention to it and you're thinking that he's just being really weird. Like, that kind of comes at you and smacks you in the face mm-hmm. with a fish. Um, that being said, time to move on to the final Yay, character. My other favorite character. The tit- the the main character of all of this, Yuki Sanada. Yuki is a, a kid with bright red hair with the typical anime parents, meaning that they're probably dead. Um, right. I think they actually are. Because they, they, I think they talk about him not having parents. Um... He is stressed out. He gets a really weird face. I think they call it the stone fishy face, David and Clint. Ah. But he's deep down a really good guy. And he um, essentially goes from being antisocial to social and learns how to have friends his own age through fishing. Playing Yuki Sanada is Adam Gibbs. Adam Gibbs, you will know as characters 
such as Seiya Kane, uh, Seiya Kane in Amagi Brilliant Park, Iku em- Iku Amiya in Uku Holder, and Koshi Sugawara in Haikyuu. And I would do this when I got more of the thing, but to to go very quickly over who plays him in Japanese, the guy's name is uh, Ryota Osaka, who does a lot of stuff. He's um, if you've ever watched the second season of Haikyuu, he's the character Akashi, who's um, Ian Sinclair's setter, but. And he's he was a uh, relatively newer uh, when he did yep. the show. Yeah. He was. He he only kind of started out in 2011, and this was I think one of kind of the the first leads that he really. This was kind of the year that he finally started getting leads. Um, I think Ongo was the other but, one for him. If I'm right, Ongo. I think wasn't he Adam? I'm looking it up, and uh... no, I'm talking about a say. Oh, not, oh, uh, oh okay. okay, sorry. No, his Seiyu, I think, might have also gotten a start around the same time. Mm. Uh, because he's also characters like Ryota in uh, Your Lion April. But uh, really, f- uh, hilariously, because he's not played by Josh Grilly, and this would have just been really funny, uh, that uh, Yuki's voice in the sub version of Suritama is uh, Zen's Seiyu in Snow White with Red oh, Hair. Oh, nice. Okay. Yep. He is, he's uh, that guy. Okay. Uh, Seth started off. Um... Clearly, if this is your first time listening to a Dub Talk episode, I wonder who stuff likes. <laughs> TLDR: Adam Gibbs is a fantastic actor. I love him the pieces. TLDR. Um, but the longer version, and in terms of this performance, it's I. It actually there are moments where I didn't recognize it was Adam. Because the tone of voice being used is different than the tone of, vo- tone of voice that I normally associate Adam Gibbs' performances as. Like, um, the Uriyes, the, um, fuck's the kid's name in Hyoka. Anzai. On- oh, um. Uh, f- fuck! You know exactly who I'm talking about, though. Like, those kinds of characters that are more, more st- kind of more stoic and more closed off in a way um yuki is none of those things he's just full of anxiety and he just is such an awkward little goober and it's so it's very different than what i'm used to associate hotoro hotoro thank you oraki oraki's great um but the tone of voice is for Yuki is extremely different than what I normally associate Adam Gibbs' performances as. And it's... Honestly, even if it's just very, very early on, because I'm pretty sure this is early on for Adam as well in in terms of his voice acting career, it's a breath of fresh air going back to it and seeing kind of in general where it started in a sense, but at the same time, just something completely different for him. And I can really appreciate that. He really does very well with the anxiety, with the um, social awkwardness that Yuki has. But he also grows, becomes a bit more confident in interacting with people. Really mostly just his three f- close friends that he ha- ha- has developed this friendship with throughout the course of the series. And he's, throughout the show too, he's learns to, he- he's capable of speaking his own mind and like, telling people how he feels, and he's just growing and becoming more confident uh, in, the more he interacts with these people, and he keeps fishing, because he found something that he legitimately loves doing, um, which I can appreciate that. So, Adam, like, I would say definitely he's one of my favorite performances. Cora still takes the cape because it's such a natural performance for Natsuki that I love it so, so much. But, um, I just, Adam is a close second only because it's very different than what I have heard him portray recently. Um, but also it's a different kind of character he gets to portray that I just love so, so much. And it's just a lot of fun because he's, he's just basic, because he's basically this introvert that doesn't know how to express his feelings or talk to people, but he uses... He uses, I, I'm finally looking at my notes, he uses a much more tenor tone 
than the baritone voice that we usually hear from at, from him in different performances. Um, but yeah, I love it. I enjoy it so, so much. It's It it was my favorite performance until I finished the show and then I thought about it and I'm like, okay, Corey is not ski, I think is my favorite performance. Adam is probably my second favorite in the show though. Mm. Um, I thought he was good. Uh, I kind of was surprised that it was Adam Gibbs in a show this early because I didn't even know that he was working with Sentai until Parasite came out. And um, when did Parasite come out? That was 2014? What, what? No, it was... Um, 2015? It was 2015 because we talked about it at that point. Right, right. We so talked about it. I had no idea that, that uh, Adam was even acting before then. So, uh, And for, for because of that... Um, he goes as far back as 2012. Yeah, he actually does. I guess he was in... Yeah, because he's in, like, uh, Heaven's Memo Pad, Ungo, Penguin Drum. Yeah. But um, you, it, I thought it was a bit of a rougher performance cause, cause, uh, because he was still fairly new at the time. And so I do like Adam Gibbs as an actor, but... Uh, I mean, when you compare it to more recent roles like he's done in Tokyo Ghoul Re, um, you could definitely tell that he is improved. Um, I thought the performance was fine. It was fitting. It it did what it needed to do. And uh, I don't have as much of an emotional attachment, maybe like Steph does. But uh, but yeah, I, I I thought it was it was it was fitting. I wouldn't say I have much of an emotional attachment to it. I just really, I just really enjoy it, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not my favorite performance in the show, but but it uh, it it does what it needs to do. It hits mm-hmm. all the notes when it needs to. Uh, so actually, fun fact: Adam Gibbs's first technical lead would probably actually be. In that's Ungo. What, that, that's where I got confused. I thought that's, I thought you were talking about Adam, and I was like, technically, it's Ungo, isn't it? And that's where I got thrown off. Yeah, it's Ungo. Uh, it's Ungo. Well, which came out? Say. Which came no. out first, Ungo or Penguin Drum? Penguin Drum. I don't think okay. he's a lead. But... No, because that was um. No, Patton. Blake Shepard. No, it's Blake Shepard. Blake Shepard. Yeah, it's Blake Shepard. Someone who we're not talking about. Right, Monica. right. Uh, which I've never seen Penguin Drums, but whatever. <laughs> I've only seen the Japanese. I've heard that that was terrible. Yeah. Yeah, the, I've heard that. I've heard if I'm gonna watch Penguin Drum, don't watch it in English. <laughs> yeah, I think that was one of the shows that Stephen Foster would just went out of his way to ruin. So, because he didn't understand it. So, which is a shame because Ikuhara works are purposely like uh, like purposely confusing and deserve to be treated yeah. as so. To which, please, for the love of God, Funimation, get his new show this year. Um, yeah. please get that show. Um. No, I actually really, really like his take on Yuki. Um, I I don't mind that it's rough because I think it being rough really lends to you, Yuki. Mm-hmm. It really does. Because Yuki is somebody who has such polarizing anxiety that is it, it's all it's debilitating. Yep. For right. Him. Like uh, one of the things that you'll you'll immediately notice if you go past even the initial opening of the show is that uh, Yuki's anxiety is portrayed as an ocean overcoming mm-hmm. him, and it's some of the the some of the best shots in the show are him being pulled out of it, like by fish. Like one of the I think it's in the first episode even where he's getting so nervous the first time he goes fishing, but when the fish hooks him, it literally drags him yeah, out of his own anxiety. that was really nice. And you're just like, wow, this is a show that is so very special. Uh, but I think Adam's performance does, its roughness lends itself to some semblance of believability. I mean, it's not its not going to win any, or, any awards. And I do completely agree that from... If you, you look at a performance such as Ur, uh, Oreki or as uh, Urie or even as Anzai, um, or hell, I think, please, I'm going to feel like a, a big dumb fucking idiot. Um, which one, which one of the Gibbs is, which one of the Gibbs is, is, is uh, Alpha? That's Scott. Okay, thank you. Um, I was like, which one of, a, which one of them is it? Um, 
Sorry, I still can't tell them apart, guys. But uh, he's also Sugamama. He is Sugamama. Uh, he's also uh, Hiromi, which is another. Yeah, one I love like. Hiromi. <laughs> um, Hiromi's such a f- Hiromi's such a fucking piece of shit. He's a great um, piece of shit, though. He's a, he's a fucking he's a piece, of piece of shit. Um, you can't tell me otherwise. He's kind of the best. Um, but I, I, I completely agree with Hardy that those performances are a lot better and a lot more nuanced in how and how they were done. Like, th- but this is obviously Adam Gibbs from six mm-hmm. years ago, where he's got maybe one, two, three, four, five, six shows worth of voice acting experience under his belt as prominently named mm-hmm. characters. So, and he's only had, at that point, had only had one lead in a show, Ungo, which is, I, I want to say, very vastly different from Suritama. Very much so. Very so, vastly different. Very vastly different. I would think um, so. So, I, I don't mind that the performance is a little rough. I can understand I can understand where you're coming from. I think it works really well. I would say he is not the strongest of the four yeah. boys. No. Again, I, I would think that Corey and, and Josh, compared to Clint and Adam... There's there's a, a gap between I think the performance mm-hmm. quality, not not a large one that it is like oh my god this dub sucks what the fuck is wrong yeah. with Sentai why would they cast mm-hmm. them, but it is very much like, and it is also I think also something very much that lends to the characters, uh, even though Akira's got a weird character he's very much grounded in reality as opposed to Yuki. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Again, not saying it's bad, but but I I understand where it's coming from. But I, I, I genuinely like the performance. I think the performance is, is pretty damn good. Especially for, um, like you had mentioned in your opening thoughts, the uh, the the time period that this was being put out mm-hmm. by Sentai. So, uh, yeah, that that's my thoughts. So I guess let's move into final thoughts. Steph, start us I'm off. I'm just going to say this much. I f- <laughs> remember how I was saying I was looking up Siritama gifts? I found the one of tapioca doing the Enoshima dance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes! I was about to send it to Andrew, but I'm going to send it to you guys instead for your viewing pleasure. Because he does it Tapioca doing the Enoshima dance. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me, let me look. Anyway. Anyway, final thoughts for me. Um, this is a very quirky show. I do enjoy it a lot. In the dub, it's for a fairly early sen- fairly early Sentai dub. Um, I really like it. I think it's pretty solid. There are some points where some casting and dire- probably direction choices kind of threw me off. And... It, it didn't come off how it was probably intended to me. But overall, it was such a fun, fun, quirky little show. It's just so... It's full of energy. It's full of laughs. But it also has its its heart to it. It has heart to it. And it's just so much fun. And it's probably... Especially probably for a good amount of the main characters in the show. Because... If I had to take a guess, at the very least, only one of the four boys was actually fairly established by the time this came out. Mm-hmm. Um, that only being Josh. Everybody else, not really. <laughs> um, but it's I, I like I like the dub. It's not exceptional. It's not the perfect. It's not the greatest thing in the world. But at the same time, it's fun, it's quirky, it's adorable, it's very solid to me. So, if you haven't seen Suritama yet, you should really go and do it before it gets anaplexed, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I agree a lot with what Steph said. Is it's not, it's not going to light the world on fire with its dub like some of the other more notable shows out there, but... Uh, it is totally serviceable. It is totally listenable. And at parts, it is even really darn good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I do think certain performances are better than others. Some casting could have been uh, could have been made different. And and but, you know, you're not we're not looking for like the perfect dub here. We're looking for something that we can listen to and doesn't grate on our ears and just is a pleasant experience, just like fishing. 
you know, we could just yep, yep, sit down and and lay our lines out and just relax for the day. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I think this one is a, uh, it's a solid. Um, let's see here, it's a solid, uh, not a catch and release, but it's a catch that you can be proud of. It's a solid tapioca. Yep. Whack. Everybody loves tapioca. For me, as somebody who was really in love with the sub of this track, I was very pleasantly surprised with how in- enjoyable this dub track was, especially for a time period, like we said, that Sentai wasn't always the the best at dubbing things. Hell, if they ever actually dub things at right. all. Um, this is a show I'm actually really surprised at that time and point that they had dubbed. Yep, it's true. Mm-hmm. Like, especially because this is, like, 2013 when this came... I believe the, the anime come out, came out in, like, uh, tw- uh, 2013. Yeah. I think that was um, the period to where if they were going to put something on a Blu-ray, it technically had to have a dub because Blu-ray authoring was so expensive that they yep. might as well just dub it anyways. Yeah, that... yeah and, and the point I want to make is this, is that the show came out in 2013, it got licensed in 2013, and the dub came out for mm-hmm. it. I would like to point out that a, a a mere one year later, the show Haikyuu would come out. Oh. Yeah. And that fucking was like pulling teeth to get them to dub. Mm-hmm. And the fact that, and here's the thing, Haikyuu was a mass success more than Suritama mm-hmm. was. Like, I, I still don't think that, I think Suritama is out there as, of the last, like, six to seven years, one of the most underrated shows you'll ever find. It is not a show that a lot of, like, people openly talk mm-hmm. about. It, when you're in an era that's high cues, your freeze, your 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 My Hero Academia, your FMA Brotherhoods, your um, I'm trying to think of other like big big kind fairy of shows tale. that came out like your fairy tales, your your Naruto's, your Boruto's, unfortunately your Shield mm. heroes, all that fun garbage shit. Not saying all those shows are garbage, just maybe the last one. Um, uh, but uh, this was a show that I think a lot of people passed over, and I'm I'm really sad that like. A lot of people did because this is a show that I, I I can easily recommend to anybody who doesn't have a phobia mm-hmm. of fish. Um, it's it's charming. It's got a lot of heart. It's funny. It's got great characters. And I think the thing that it, the, the the strength of the show itself in that it it lends itself to the dub being really easy to listen yes. to. And it's like Hardy and Steph said is this is not a dub that's going to win an, a bunch of awards. This is not like. Boonyo Stray Dogs level, like, My Hero Academia, March Comes in Like a Lion, uh, Made in Abyss, like, this isn't the, the, like, the dub that's going to, like, convince a dub hater that dubs are actually good. But for people who really like dubs, and you want to show somebody who can't read subtitles a dub and not be like, yeah, I'm really sorry, guys, I gotta listen to this. It, it works. And I think that's sometimes what you kind of need in a show. Like, not every dub has to be like, oh my god, this is the best thing ever. Sometimes it's, I want to watch this Mm -hmm. show. And there's no shame in that. So, at the time of this recording, you can currently watch the subtitled version on both Crunchyroll and High Dive in the dub on High Dive. And, VR, and Verve, because they, they work together and stuff. And I actually want to complain about Verve for a second in that, holy shit, it's really hard to make next episode plays. in on the episode I am recording on Tuesday, I'm going to have an even bigger complaint. Oh, Yay! Um, but, and you can still buy the DVDs and the Blu-ray. They are both on separate releases. They are not combo yeah. releases like Sentai, uh, uh, like Funimation does. Um, so pick one. I believe as of the day of this, uh, the sale's gonna be over, but if Sentai does a sale, please grab this show if you want to watch mm-hmm. the dub. It is, I believe, April 1st. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, let 30? me check the expiring Aniplex list. Uh, so I, ha- I have it, it on is, DVD, it is... actually, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is on that in- expiring Aniplex list. And frankly, I don't trust them to put this show right. out. Back out again. Unfortunately, because even though the show it's, should it's fucking like, be out, it's like Shiki. Great. They're never gonna put this out again. Yeah, which it's is a fucking shame. fucking bullshit. Because Shiki is is great and has one of the best dubs that I think Funimation's ever done. So, um, but please buy the show. Please watch the show. Um, and if and if you are somebody who has seen the show and you sat this episode, uh, please don't. And you're trying to get people to watch it. Please don't tell them what happens. Like, these two can speak from experience, and I told them yep. nothing. 
about yeah, the show. Absolutely the, the, big, nothing. the big stipulation was like, oh, if you're watching the show, only send. If only you're watching the show stuff. and you want to react to it, you were only allowed to DM. Yeah, me. we had to DM her like separately. We couldn't. Yeah, we couldn't. We couldn't as like a trio just like DM each other for it because he started it before I did. Yeah, they had to. They had to both completely keep separate mm-hmm. from me. Because I refuse to let them either of them find out about anything in the show. Because I think that's like one of the best parts about the show. Did you get the the, the date? Uh, yes. Uh, let's see. It's o four o one nineteen. Yep, April first. Damn. Yep. Okay. April first of this yeah. year. Oh, yeah. So hopefully this will be up by the end of the month, so you'll have at least like. A oh month yeah, to and, and and so and if and if you want to use High Dive's wonderful services. We have a code. In the, we have a code in in our descriptor yep. thingy. So you can use that, and you can get fifty percent off in one month subscription of High Dive if you're interested. Mm-hmm. Yep. And if you like anything we do, we're the Dub Talk Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, uh, Twitch. Tumblr's, Tumblr's dead. Tumblr's dead. Tumblr's been found dead in Miami with Nico Yazawa, the first Ico- and the first Ico. Yes. Ooh. Um. But and if you really like what you do, and you think that you want to support us and give us money, you can always buy us a mm-hmm. Kofi. Uh, and then you two introduce yourselves. Uh, you two show yourselves out because this episode's actually really good on time. It is good on time. Oh, yeah. For once. Uh, my name is Stephanie. I'm also known as Lilac on occasion by some of these goobers. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Lilac Anime Review with review being spelled R E V U E. I also have a blog, um, Life and Times Otaku.wordpress.com, which I haven't updated in a hot second, which I need to fix that problem. Um, but yeah, that's basically me. Yeah. I'm Spaceman Hardy. You can follow me at Spaceman Hardy on Twitter. I'm also a uh, a, for, a moderator, forum moderator over at Funimation on their forums and their Discord. If you want to come out and hang out with me, that'd be cool. And uh, I do need to get around to posting more goat pictures. So thank you for the friendly reminder. <laughs> Post one right now. <laughs> do <Yes>. it. <laughs> I'm, I'm a do it. Do it now. I want to see it. I want to see it and retweet that shit. If you can hear that noise in the back, if you can hear my uh, that noise in the background, that's my cat trying to get out of the room. She's been asleep in my closet the entire episode. Nice. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Shinya, what are you doing? I've been sleeping. Shin. Shishi, what are you doing, Gordo? Um. Anyway, my name is Megan. You can follow me at Queen or Two. I ship posts. That's about it. You, I also hang out in the Funimation Discord, and I'm usually the big grumpy bitch of the server. Um. That being said, I thank you all for watching this episode. <laughs> Um, I'm actually surprised this isn't longer than it is. We did really good on time for once in our lives. Yes. Hooray! We we caught the fishy. We're good. We can all go home and see our Woo! families. Yay! I haven't showered in <laughs> weeks. <laughs> Sounds like a personal problem. I think I caught scurvy. Oh, no. Oh, no. Give me some lemons. <laughs> oh, my God. Guys, we found him. It's Tom Hanks. <laughs> We also, holy shit, we found him, guys. We also found a goat in our chat, Megan. (laughs) This is, this is not quite what I expected, but okay. (laughs) Did you tweet the goat, though? I need to tweet a goat, yes. You need to tweet a goat, not just DM Also, hey, guys, uh, while you guys are retweeting and DMing the goat, I found this thing. It's called the One Piece. I think it's the friends we made along the way. And now it's Good night, everybody, and otaku on my friends. All right, time to reel this one in. Ah!